how can we in the room, you know, help to make sure that the Paris Agreement is realized? And how can we learn um, from this really unique moment that, that you presided over last year when the whole world came together and we had a multilateral agreement? How can we go forward from this? Well, I think there's several buckets that need to be filled up pretty quickly. Um, the, the first is the legal, and you've already mentioned that uh, the Paris Agreement may come into force quite quickly. Originally, we had intended, we, the global community, had intended that the Paris Agreement would come into force in 2020. Unfortunately, because of all of the momentum that was built up, it's very possible that it will come into uh, force either at the end of this year uh, after Marrakesh uh, or in the beginning of next year. So a whole three years ahead of time, which is very good news. Um, that means that that Paris Agreement is going to be legally binding in those countries that have ratified. Um, and we would expect most, if not all, of the countries who adopted the agreement to then eventually Ratify. So you would have a legally binding international legal structure uh, for, uh, for countries to then begin to devolve that into national level and subnational level also legal structures that need to be developed. So you do need that. You need the, the legislation, you need the regulation put in place in countries uh, and in states, provinces, cities in order to provide both the carrots and the sticks for the implementation of the agreement. So the legal bucket needs to be uh, needs to be filled. You also need to look at the uh, technology bucket. And there, again, that is a, uh, a collaboration, a partnership between private and public sector, because the public sector must continue to invest in the cutting edge technologies that are not yet mature enough that they have come to market. They're not, uh, they're not competitive yet. But we know that we will need more of those clean technologies. And that is a responsibility of the, uh, of the public sector. But the private sector needs to continue to disseminate uh, the technologies that are already market uh, market uh, driven and that are already very competitive in most uh, in most most areas in most jurisdictions. So that needs to uh, to move forward, of course, hand in hand with the third bucket, which is the financial sector. And there again, there are responsibilities of the public uh, public sector in finance, and there are responsibilities in the private sector and. President Moreno has already talked about blended finance, which is the only way to move forward because you do need some of the most difficult risks to be taken off the table. You need the political risk. You need the currency risk, perhaps. Uh, you need you know, some of the local risk to be taken off the table by public funding, whether that is the multilateral development banks or other types or national, uh, national funding. But you do need that, low, uh, that risk to be taken off so that that can then leverage the kinds of investments that uh, we need to see because we're currently only at about $300 um, billion dollars of investment per year into renewables. That's good. That's fine. But it is nowhere close to where we need to be. We need to be at a trillion a year over the next 10 to 15 years in order to make that agreement come down into uh, the, the manageable temperature rise. So, so the finance bucket um, is another one that, uh, that needs to be filled. So you see that there are many different buckets. And bucket actually is a wrong word for it because they are interconnected. You do have to see the interconnection between the legal, the, the technology, the finance, the policy. All of these are interconnected. And they all need to be working hand in hand in order to accelerate it um, as much as possible. And let me just be very clear about the fact that if there is something that the Paris Agreement did not do, it did not inject a sense of urgency into the transformation. And that is my only regret about the Paris Agreement. Because the fact is that the Paris Agreement puts a final destination way off there, you know, into the second half of the century. Well, you know, in order to be where we need to be in the second half of the century, which is having restored the ecological balance between emissions and the natural absorption of the planet, we need to be making a difference today. And that means over the next five years. So I have constantly, ever since parents, invited everyone. And here you are, your golden engraved invitation to swallow the alarm clock. Swallow the alarm clock because this is urgent. It has to happen over the next five years. If we're not able to reach global peaking, that means the maximum level of emissions uh, over the next five years and then a very quick descent, we will close the door to 1.5, which means 
we will have the entire population of the Marshall Islands looking for another home. And we may endanger the, even the two degrees, which means we will have populations the size of Bangladesh, you know, 30 million people looking also for, uh, for other homes. It is a world that nobody wants. The Bangladeshis don't want it. The Marshall Islands don't want it. Nobody wants that kind of, uh, of a situation. And in a world today where we already have 65 million people who are already displaced, two thirds of them are displaced within their countries. One third of them are already displaced beyond their boundaries. We know the pressure that Europe is under with 65 million people displaced. Now can you imagine if that's going to very quickly double, triple, or quadruple because of climate migration pressures? So this is a world we don't want. This is a, pre a world that you know the insurance company can't handle. Uh, and they don't want to handle it either. We want to make sure that we keep the risk and pain, human pain and human cost within the marginal, within the manageable uh, levels that we can. This is not you know, a fantastic situation that we're given, but we have to manage it and we have to do it urgently in order to keep it within the boundaries of responsible management.